Hey gamers, um, welcome to my customer PCs tutorial. My name is Doug, or Dugganaut, and I'd like to uh, kind of present this tutorial for uh, novice slash beginner scripters. I'll be showing uh, my way of getting blocks and uh, item names and the like within an area, and then kind of uh, passing that into, into an array that we can then use later on for, I don't know, regenerating ores, logic, and all sorts of that. Alright, but before we start, I have some basic setup that we need to get out of the way first. Number one, we need Nashorn. Nashorn is the in-between between the custom NPCs and our code. You write your code kind of into, into Nashorn through, through the, the scripter. So let's say we right-click this dude. You see here, um, see how it displays EMCA script? That's how we know that we have Nashorn installed. EMCA script is essentially, it's very, very similar to JavaScript. There are a lot of crossovers, however, it is not JavaScript. It is an EMCA language. I'm not going to go too much into depth on what an EMCA language is, but essentially, very similar to JavaScript. If you learn about JavaScript, you're most likely learning about EMCA unless you start entering the realm of array lists and more complex ways of of uh, of dealing with things that EMCA just or th rather this version of EMCA doesn't support um i'm not going to go too far into this as it's a bit of an interesting complicated subject but anyways you need to have nashorn installed to install nashorn you need to drop the the jar into your mods mods folder or into your server's mod folder if you are programming on a server. Alright, next up we have custom PCs plus. Uh, I'm working on version 1.6.2 which has just introduced an incredible new documentation and particle reworks and all this crazy stuff that I never thought would be possible on this version. You need 1.6.2 or greater. Anything um, lower than this, I mean I can't guarantee it would work. It, it probably would. But uh, there, there are chances of the version you're working on being unstable and the like. Well, that aside, next up we have Visual Studio Code. Um, Visual Studio Code is the um, the development environment that um, that I like to work in. I like to program outside of custom NPCs, kind of um, in a in a place that I know my code is safe. Uh, when you're programming in game, there. are certain scenarios that can arise when you lose your code. No fault of the mod itself, either your server restarts and blah, blah, blah. But because of how the code is stored in the editor, it is stored client-side, and it's not actually saved to the world as of yet until you press escape and exit the window, and then it is transferred into the NPC itself, and it's saved as it were. There is no autosave feature as of yet, so if you if you have exited from the NPC prematurely, it's deleted or I don't know, goes out of range or whatever, you may lose the code that, that you are writing at the current time. So it's always best to save your code in a, a different location and or kind of software. And I, I prefer Visual Studio Code, and I know other scripters do as well. That is not to say that there aren't alternatives. You can, you can code in, I don't, know, I don't know, if you really want to do Notepad++. Um, there, are, there are lots and lots of others. I don't know, like Vim, even. Vim, Vim would work. Anyways, doc the documentation. Arguably one of the, I don't know, the best things that happened to custom NPCs, I'd say, is is the documentation that came with custom NPCs Plus. Incredible. Let's have a quick look at it now. Um, this is the documentation. So, let's have a look at overview. So, an interface is, um, it's like a class, essentially. It is. Uh, it contains all of the functions and methods that we can use in here. So we want. I don't know. Let's have a look at. Let's try and get to the the NPC. So we go into entity. I custom NPC. And look at all this. We have all these. All these. So let's say we want to execute a command. Uh, we'd go NPC dot execute command, and then we'd put a string for the command. What is a string? You ask. Um, a string is literally just. Um, Anything within quotations, it can be numbers, it can be characters, it just has to be within um, kind of double quotes. 
Uh, so let's let's have a look. So we want. Let's delete this guy real quick and spawn a new one in. Right click ground for your MC1. Marina. Um, all right. We make sure this is enabled. We go into scripts. We go into interact, and then we go NPC dot execute command. And I don't know. Let's let's be epic. Let's go sudo. Um, Doug. Gone. TPS. So what this will do is just this will run a command as if we were this person. And I'm off on the server, so we could run anything. I could de up myself, whatever. Only uh, admin permission, admin slash operator permissions can do this, so don't worry. Um, so go ahead. It's run the command as if it were me. Incredible. Now let's move on to the next section. Um, so essentially, you can't uh, do anything unless you get an item stack. And an item stack is what we use to place items. Essentially, it's what we're given when we get an item's name in the world. So, for instance, this grass block, uh, or rather, this dirt underneath it, would be, um, it'd be a string that would be Minecraft colon dirt. And uh, so I've got a little bit of code here that I just want to show you. Essentially, we are printing to console. This little thing is console. Um, we are printing npc dot get the right item it's holding dot get the name. So get the name of the right item. So he's holding a stick. We right click him again. Look at that. Minecraft stick. So that that there is an item stack. So say we wanted, I don't know. Uh, we've got that. Uh, let's let's call it var stick is equal to. Uh, let's I don't know. Oopsie. Minecraft stick, and then let's go uh, world dot create item uh, stick. Uh, we want zero, come on, one, and then NPC dot set right. I am uh, so this in theory in theory let me let me take this this uh glorious object from its hand um now if we right click it you should get another one whoa look at that um so what if what what he's got here is uh, we are using, we are getting this. We have gotten an, an item stack, and we have we've printed it, and now we've we've transferred that. Uh, we've we've used this this item stack that we've discovered, um, and we've created an item in the world. Um, with this is this is item damage, and this is the amount of items to create. So an item stack, even if there's just one item in the item stack, that is still an item stack, if that makes sense. There's a whole section on item stacks in the wiki, actually. Um, and let's go to interfaces item, item stack. So there's all sorts we can do. Um, so let's go here and we go uh, sticky dot create. Oh no, not create. Actually, you know what? If I was smart, then I'd do something like this. This paste thing, by the way, this um, essentially it removes anything you've got here. So do keep that in mind. Let's give this a quick demo. Let's copy this, clear it, paste it, paste it in in it or something, and let's go. I don't know. Hello, world. 
and then that's uh, you know you want to paste them again, but it gets rid of it all. So you want to keep an eye out for that. Uh, copy and clear are both pretty pretty effective. Editor, I don't really use, and load scripts. Um, I just haven't used it enough. I don't really know how it works too well. I'm sure there's a proper usage, and maybe I'll find out next time. But anyways, let's um, let's give this a go. Let's go sticky dot stick custom name, and there we go. I'm guessing it wants a string. It does. Uh, we want to call it sticky the stick. Let's have a look at this. No errors. Hey, look at that. Here he is. It's true that we've just made um made like an anvil. We've literally just named renamed the stick. But uh this can be done to a whole lot more. But um yeah. That is the, the basis of creating uh getting an item stack and then using it and then uh kind of I don't know, messing about with the uh I guess messing about with the name. Welcome to the next section. Um essentially um the aim is to get these two these two blocks. So this is this is simple enough really. So if we actually full screen uh, oh, put this back on the side. Um what we would want to do is we would want to um I guess devise a like a, a really really simple way of getting a singular block in, in space. Uh let me so let me go into this real quick and actually use what I suggested. Um so it'd be like world dot get block. So let's 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 go in here and let's um let's open up documentation. Let's find it's not entity, it's an item item block. Um okay, so we use world.get block and then we have dot get block name. So we I've already got some stuff out here because I'm awful at remembering uh coordinates. So that is Three seven X three seven uh what is it again? Six and one six three. Alright. So let's let's grab this, paste it into our NPC. Um I don't interact. And let's quickly put it inside a print. Let's see what he says. Expected that, but found that. Okay, here we go. Bam. I forgot the open brackets. Okay. Okay, I see what's going on here. Um. So what we've got here is we are we are getting a block. So it still returns an item stack, or rather a script item stack, which is something we can't read. So we're gonna go to the variable. Uh, of our block, uh, left block, because well, that, and then we've got left block dot get name. Uh, this is pretty tried and tested for me. Um, wow, look at that Minecraft standing sign. But let's uh let's instead of replace that with five. Um Wow, Minecraft laughs. So now we've now we've got the block name. Uh I guess you could we could also use this and we could go we could we could copy this stuff. Uh we could do it again. Um and all that. Um Eight 
so what you can do as well um, is you can add things together inside it because you'll say and it'll say it um, just like a, uh, like a sentence. So we've got one minute. Um, so again, that's five. We want redstone. Wow, in incredible! But say, say you wanted to get more than one block. Say you wanted to get, I don't know, blocks within a certain area. Well, that that becomes a lot more complicated. And while you could, uh, you could go in and you, you could get, uh, I don't know, you could type this down like thirty times. It's just not a very maintainable way of writing code. And it's a lot of effort on your part. And, fortunately for us, there are some very cool data structures that we can use to deal with this stuff in the next section. So, um, here, in this scenario, we want to get blocks. Uh, we want to get all these blocks right in front of us. And essentially, we can't... Um, we could spend our time using world.getBlock for each and every one of these. But that would be a huge waste of time. What if you want a system that can... I don't know, it's not, it's not exactly maintainable code, which is what we want. We want something that you can slap down with a little bit of tinkering, and then it's done. Uh, using world.getBlock many times, copy and pasting code is not maintainable, and it's not what you're looking for. So, what we want to do is we want to use a for loop. Let me, let me quick demo this. So, a basic for loop starts with the for keyword, and that's we, we instantiate a variable. So, essentially, this is a variable i. Variable i is equal to zero. And then we have the condition. Um, as long as variable i is less than 10, increment i by 1 every time this code block is run. So we have, uh, I don't know, print hello world. Let's, let's, let's get this in. Um, let's, let's plug this into mist over here. Paste. Look at that. So, let's right click this dude. 10 hello worlds. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize a for loop to get these bottom blocks. The thing is about a for loop is it can only handle one condition, which which is fine, and we're going to be using it as as such. We're going to get all the bottom blocks, so that is eight three seven to eight three three. So if i is equal to eight three seven, i is less than three. So immediate issue, we need to reverse these. And now, let's uh, at least for our sakes, let's change this. This can be whatever you want, but it's preferable that you call it something that we can actually like look at properly. And let's go um, greater than or equal to, not less than. Hmm. All right. So let us three seven. That makes more sense. So let's. Um, Let's utilize this. So we want well dot no JavaScript is going in. Well dot get block. We want x four and one seven one. Yeah. The x, the y, and the z. So what you'll see get name. So let's do some of this. Let's let's plug this in. Paste. What's it given us? Nothing, because we haven't printed it. Look at that. Redstone block. Dirt, 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 and redstone block. Exactly what we wanted. So, what do you suppose is next? Next up at that. 
so a for loop can only contain one condition. Well, what we do in this case is we do a nested for loop. So we go for the y-axis. Bar y is equal to uh, 4. And I'm pretty sure bedrock is actually 0. Um, y equals 4. And we want y to be... Well, y is less than 9. Less than or equal to 9. We want y plus plus. Uh, let's put it into practice. See what we get. Paste. Oops, I forgot to print again. Well, 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 well. Um, so that's great and all, but it looks like I've messed up a little bit. I've forgotten to put Y in here. So let's do it. All right, an exception. Type error. Null has no such function in get name. No such function get name. So this has been caused by these empty spaces. So how do we deal with an empty space, you ask? Well, we've got to check because obviously a block of, of null, aka nothing or air, doesn't have a Minecraft name. So we've got to make a check. We want if an if statement, just to kind of to check if something is true or false. Paste. Uh, if world dot get block x y one seven one dot not equal to null, we get the name. That looks pretty reasonable. Um, now let's let's plug it in. See what we get. Um, paste. Look at that. So we have a redstone block, a standing sign, another block. And it all looks correct. Let's clear the console error to make sure we have nothing here. Very nice. Look at that. Alright, so can you guess what is next? When I reveal this is actually a three-dimensional um, structure, as it were. Let's get rid of these. And let's let's get this this collection of blocks. So once again, another nested for loop. Z is equal one seven one. Z is uh, a less than. 175 less than or equal to 175 and then we want z plus plus very cool let's plug this in see what we get paste hmm now what do you give us? Very cool. Uh, that's a lot of signs. I suppose there were a few. Um, oh, that's right. I, um, as I said earlier, I don't usually like using mpc.say and we won't, um, a whole lot during this video. Okay, this is it. So, what we've done here is, congrats if you figure that out by the way, I forgot, but um, what we've got here is we have gotten every single block within these, these kind of like redstone blocks here. 
um, we have yet to to re to really apply this. So the uses of this before before I move to the next section. By by doing so, what we've got here is we have a um, well we have a list I suppose. We have a list of all of these different different blocks that are currently present. It's pretty long, and we could save these as individual variables. To save a variable, all we need to do is use um, npc dot set temp data. And temporary data is cleared upon server reset, so we would go what world dot set temp data you'd have uh, what you want to call the temp data, and then the actual temp data itself. But in this case, uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't want to do that, because um, it's not particularly efficient either. So we want to use a data structure known as an array, and we'll cover that in the, the next section. Here we have it. This is quite an intimidating looking block. Um, we can apply the code we used before. However, the difference is here is we want to actually save it. We want to save every single block that's in this this full this full cube, um, and we want to save all of these all of these blocks into something called an array. An array, sorry, is essentially a sequence rather of, of data. Let's have a look at this. So, an array. How does one how does one make an array? Um, an array can be made in several ways. The first, or the most memorable, memorable is var block of ors is equal to new array. That that is an array. That is an array that is empty. It's got nothing in. Say you wanted to instantiate an array of uh, of different weapons or fruit. Um, so we got bar uh, fruit and fruit is equal to we want a banana, banana, orange. Um, kiwi and apple. So, in this case, we have an array full of different fruit. Whoopsie, almost forgot that. Um, and let's say we plug this into uh, into the NPC or an NPC that we make now. Uh, let's slap them down here. Let's have it interact. Let's paste it in. I think my uh, my copy and paste was on a slightly haywire there. All right, so we want to n uh, npc dot say fruit. They're all going to be squished together, so we can add a little space here. If this were something else, if this were like normal normal code, I would not include a space. Because they can, they can mess you up slightly. Look at that. Banana, orange, kiwi, apple. Fantastic. So, uh, say we're doing this method instead. And we're, we're just straight making an array. And we're just, you know, we're just putting it out. We want to push something to the array. So let me, let me open up a nice little resource. W3 schools arrays. Very cool. Um... Oh no, 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 I'll be doing that later. Yeah, well, we are looking for push. I'm, I'm just gonna do it normally. You know what, let's, let's also use a function. I'm, I also, you know what, let's push the boat out. I'm gonna show you a function as well. What is a function? A function or a method is basically, uh, it's like a already defined set of code that you, that you run. Um, so we, in this in this case, um, let's let's use it. Let's, let's, let's use it for this. But function um, add to 
array. And let's take in a fruit. Very cool. Um, we want... This would have to be instantiated first. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to reference it. But we want block of ors dot push, and we want fruit. That'll do. That is that is the gist of it. But essentially, what we've got right now is this: this would uh, add the fruit that you input into the uh, into the function to the array. If I want to do it this way then I think it could be a bit interesting. So what we're going to do is we are going to use math, math.random. Um, let's find, hmm, what does, what does W3Schools have to say? There we go. Okay, this is, this is, this is good. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to make a small switch case so what is a switch case a switch case is it's like a better if statement if that makes sense um depending on the output of something we can uh, we have to we create different cases that the, the npc will look through and then depending on what we get from the random that we're about to make you know anyways so we go var temp uh we don't want fruit this is going to be a void so, uh, let temp, temp rand is equal, rand fruit is equal to math dot random. We want, also want to do math dot floor. Uh, what is math dot floor? I'm pretty sure that link, that puts it as a, uh, as an integer. A whole number. That's right. It keeps it as as an integer. Uh, fruit is no longer part of the array, so we're just going to delete that. So we have math dot random, and then we want what does this say? Times ten plus one. So let's let's expand our our screen. Uh, we want five. And then we plus one. Okay, yeah. Calculation is always done with, with, uh, within the brackets first. So that's what we're doing here. We are getting a... This is the minimum, by the way. And this is the maximum. Usually, when you do um, do this in a, in a function, you would have min max. But we've already got a predefined number of... Uh, Number of fruit, I guess. There's actually four here. Me. All right. So this is a random number between one and four. So we have a switch. Switch. Temp ran fruit. So cool thing about switch case is it's very efficient. So we have a, a case. The case of one. What happens when the fruit, temp brand fruit is one? Case two, case three, case four. And then uh, default. So default is optional. You don't need a default in your case. But um, I like to include it, but always, always prepare for the worst. So um, we want return. undefined fruit so essentially default what happens if it is none of these pretty useful return banana oh let me quick get my uh, it isn't needed for everything to line up We don't want to return. We want to make a var. This could be temp rand. Var fruit. 
All right, so we want fruit equals banana. Fruit. Orange. Apple. Kiwi. Banana. Oh, okay, apple, orange, kiwi, banana. Um, undefined fruit. Um, all right. Uh, let's go. Temp run. So, technically, in theory, what this code should do is it should generate a random fruit, and then it should assign the variable fruit to apple, orange, kiwi, banana, or undefined if something goes wrong. So, now that switch is, is done, what we can do is we can go uh, block of ores dot push fruit. And you see, this, this in theory, in theory, this would work. So, let's, let's get it. God, dude, got, got a bit smoky there for a second. All right. Well, welcome back, guys. Um, as you probably saw from that that video or the previous the previous section, I had a few technical difficulties. Um, they're resolved now. I figured out what's wrong and what was wrong with my code. And all of that. There was a variety of issues at play. Of course, none of them naturally had to do with the um, the way I was updating the weather by executing commands into console every single 10 ticks. Uh, there was nothing that, you know, never could have been that. There's no way. There's no way I could have caused this. So, um, anyways, I've stopped that script from running. And it now it seems to be kind of A-OK. -okay. So, uh, let's go into the code I was talking about with arrays. So... Let's, let's get over this. So I'll quick do a quick run through of the code that as it is now. So what was wrong? Uh, essentially, we have um, the issue with this code was it was only printing a single fruit. And that was because I was initializing the array and also um, pulling from this initialized version of the array. So when the array is made, it is empty. There is nothing inside it at all. And when you try and pull from that, of course, there's going to be nothing inside it. So you can't display what the array is when there, you know, when there's nothing inside. It. So, and we initialize the array in the init tab. Then now in interact, we um, we get the array we've initialized, and then we make a function here, and we make a temporary variable, which just generates a random number from one to four. And then case one is if the number, so switch, this switch basically just, depending on the output of temp rand, one of these cases will be will be active. So essentially, uh, you know, if it's one, apple, two, orange, three, kiwi, four, banana, all of that. And default is if it were to break, it would add an undefined fruit. So we close that off. A break basically, um, just declares where one line ends in a switch case. So that's fine. And now we have fruitlist.push. So we, we get the array that we, we've got here that we've established. And then we add fruit. And so fruit is equals to one of these strings, one of these uh, words or fruit. So then we push, we add it to the end of the array and then we set the temp data, fruit and fruit list. And by doing this, we actually set the original value. This is now the new fruit list that we've created with the 
values inside. So once that func so that function is now complete, and then we literally just do add to array. We call the function. A cool thing you can do, for instance, is we can say we wanted how about, how about fruit A, fruit B, fruit C, and fruit D. So basically, what we're going to show, oh, I'm going to show off here is I'm going to show off what arrays, not arrays, uh, functions are actually useful for. So we've got for A, for B, for Z, and for E. So now, what we what we've done here is we've uh, we've given ourselves a um, we've added. I think they're called operands. Anyways, these are function these are function arguments. So essentially, when we put in one of this, we when we set the fruit A, it in turn will change this value. So this allows us to customize our functions for the, the situation that we're using them for. So we could make, a, I don't know, um, a list of weapons, for instance, or, or whatever. Uh, this, will, this will make sense a little bit later. But now let's copy this. So now I'll go back into this dude. paste. Now, what we need to do, and we've changed it, is we need to add operands. So, uh, let's go weapons. So, we have stave, dagger, short sword. So, what you can do in this case, just to make it appear a little bit prettier, is to add a space at the end of each of the strings. Usually you wouldn't do that, as that would cause a few issues, but at least in this case, it's fine. Uh, short sword, and let's go broad sword. And I'll do. So, let's give it a go. Stave, broad sword, dagger, dagger. Where's the short sword? There we go. Got a little bit unlucky for a second. But yeah, look at that. We have a list of weapons that have been generated randomly. All right, well, let's continue. Um, you may have been wondering what the previous section, uh, I say the previous section, the, the little little bit we did before this with the switch cases, how it, how it related to the work we have. So essentially, that, that was just something I throw in just to show you, um, I guess, a different way of handling data rather than just ifs and elses, and whatever you might use. Uh, switch cases are incredibly useful. And of course, they're not, they're not there for everything. And if, it, if you're just dealing with Boolean values or anything with uh, just two conditions, an if statement is perfectly fine. Anyways, um, so what we are gonna do is we are gonna, we're gonna look at this block here and we are gonna get but every block within the boundaries of this of this cube, and then we are going to add it to an array in a way that doesn't actually break our server. So, 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 so. So what we got here? Um, let me grab this little this little buddy, and let's um. Okay, so I've already taken the measurements of this block. You don't have to worry about that. But so. This is what it gives us: just a huge amount of just different blocks. If you see if you see any mod blocks in here, don't worry, we'll deal with that when we get to it. So, first thing we should do is we are going to be looking at. Um, okay, first we'll tackle this. We want to have the block's name, and then we want to save that along with the position into a single argument so 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 what we would do all right let me let me quick um open up a w3 schools page on this just so you guys can follow along a little bit more easily all right so let's make this a little bit more readable let's go var block equals world to get block x y z Let's also make a, a check. Uh, 
num check equals block dot get name. So so so. What we want to do here is we'll separate that for just a second, just a second. And so we've got the block name. But if you try and get the name of a block that doesn't exist, then essentially it will throw an error. So we're doing exactly what we did here. So if uh, now we can change this to check or block, sorry. If block is not equal to null, then var nam check equals block dot get name. We can get rid of you. Put a semicolon there. So we can do a cool thing. Um, we can go. Uh, we want we want to reference our. Oh, whoops. So cube called new array. New array. And we want cube dot push. And then we want JSON dot stringify. And then what, what we're going to do. So this will turn all the values we have into the into like a collective string, essentially. So we want to have uh, nam check. Let's call it nam for now. There's no point having a having a check on it. And then plus. So the reason why I do this, why I introduced introduce uh, space, I say spaces, commas, is because essentially what, when we save this this uh, this long kind of string, the string itself doesn't mean anything. The ve the data inside is when it is turned to a string, it it's kind of um, it has no meaning. So essentially it'll just be the name of the block here. So what we can do is we can get this value from the array, we can pull it, and then we can split it. Uh, and how split works is it finds a certain character, right? You can you can make it find a certain character, and then split the split, I say cut the uh, the string into different kind of bite sized sections. So what we're going to do is we are going to punctuate our, our string with commas. X, Y, and Z. So this isn't perfect, but it will suit our purposes for now. Hey Obviously, guys, it's the editor here. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for the next video. See you next time.